Welcome to the All American Book Club. I'm Eden Gordon Hill, and we have a very powerful summer reader guest for you guys. Hey, kids, listen up. This is for you. We bring to the show presidential historian, author, news commentator, and former White House webmaster, Jane Hampton Cook. She has released a whole new patriotic children's book series for Memorial Day. And as we head into Flag Day, June 14th and July 4th, obviously all of the patriotic holidays, but hey, families and those sitting around the kitchen table, put down your phones because we are gonna talk about these very powerful books. I have been able to read some of them, see the beautiful illustrations and see America and the understanding of the flag America the Beautiful, the Pledge of Allegiance, My Country Tis of Thee, it comes to life for the reader. It comes to life for this generation. So let's welcome to the show, Jane Hampton Cook. Thank you so much for joining this morning. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Like I said, your books are stunning. Like I told you before, I've already ordered some and sent them to my godson, my god kids. I can't get enough of these books. They're so stunning. But I really want to kind of go back to the very beginning. What inspired you to write this set of books? Um, it, is it because we're seeing that decline of civics in our school systems? Or is it more that you just want to, you know, make sure that these are out there for this next generation? What really inspired you to sit down and do these books? Well, I looked at the category of children's books where the books are numbered, like one to four. So I'm yeah. reading, like, looking through them and on Amazon, and I realized there just weren't any that were about the flag. There were a couple Amer American history oriented books, one on Ben Franklin, one on Alexander mm -hmm. Hamilton, but that was it. It was mostly princesses and animated characters, mm -hmm. which is all fine and good. But I just felt like there was a need because we have seen this decline in patriotism. Yes. And I that there was a, a need to put into the marketplace a set of learning to read type books that are numbered based on reading level, but that are that are about the flag and about mm -hmm. the pledge to the flag and these patriotic songs. And so, um, and to to do it with really beautiful art mm -hmm. and bring to life the lyrics, you know, of America the Beautiful. And mm -hmm. so that's I want this generation to mm -hmm. um, get. They deserved, which is to be taught the truth about our country and to be to learn about the flag. Um, and you know, I remember when my three son was three, my youngest son was three, and my dad would hold him and he'd point at red, white, and blue, the flag, you mm -hmm. know, and just teaching this just the basics, you know. Yes. <laughs> stars on our flag. Yes. You know, it can be big, it can be tall, you know, and just to really help engage children into, you know, the the beauty of our of our cultural nation's heritage. Right. You know, the word patriotism and something you said struck me. I will say that it was actually Mother's Day weekend of this year. My husband and I attended the Blue Angels Air Show. They returned to here in Eastern North Carolina. And it was over at Cherry Point where they house the F-35. So it's a very important base, obviously. And there was more than 80,000 in attendance at the Saturday event. And the point of reference is it was Mother's Day weekend. So they could be off traveling, doing whatever, but they were at this air show. And one of the spouses that I was talking with, military spouses, she said, we can't get over just how many people are here. And I said, they're hungry for patriotism. Yeah. There's a third there's a thirst there's wow. a there's a need to really see to live and to be inspired what this country stands for That's and, right. yeah. and i and you and i'm going to say this to you you were bringing that out in your books for this next generation so talk to me about age groups because obviously i sat there and read them and i loved them and i'm like oh, a second i didn't know that <laughs> But I mean, obviously the age group is for a younger group, but let's talk about that. Do you, let's talk about the series. Let's go through the series and talk about the age groups. Okay. So the first book in the series is called My American Flag. It's got a number one on it. And it's for, a, I would say four to six year olds, you, you know, seven would be fine too, but it's got some rhyme in it. Mm -hmm. It's just 
you know, it's my American flag. It can be big, it can be small, it can be low as in half staff, it can be tall, you know, maybe on a mountain or the top of the flagpole. And it's just to show, you know, the flag. And so that's for that younger generation that's just learning to read or hearing sounds and identifying two things, identifying objects and ideas and emotions. You know, how does the flag make me feel? Sometimes it makes us feel sad when we think about Memorial Day, right? right. But then most of the time it makes us feel glad and yeah. it makes us chant USA out loud. And yeah. that's, you know, the flag makes us proud. And so yeah. that's the, the vibe of the first book mm -hmm. um, with beautiful pictures. And I really wanted to create a variety of, of children. Mm -hmm. um, this isn't the same two children throughout the whole series. This is a variety of children, different mm -hmm. ethnicities, um, in, in showing them in different locations, you know, certainly the Statue of Liberty and the Golden Gate Bridge, but, but also, um, you know, really, really showing, you know, churches, there's pictures of churches yeah. in the book and to show people singing, mm -hmm. um, singing America the Beautiful and, um, to just show some things that I don't think we see in the average children's book. That, that comes into the marketplace. Um, so that's the first book, My American Flag. And then the second book is um, America the Beautiful. And it's just the lyrics set to beautiful pictures. Mm -hmm. So you can talk your child through it. They can learn there's some, you know, nice lyricism, you know, poetry to the words from sea to shining sea. Yeah. Um, you can see that illustrated and what, you know, that might look like. Um, mm -hmm. When you when you're hearing the song, you know, Purple Mountain Majesties, there's purple mountains in the book. Yeah. Um, and it, sh it shows you America, the, the wide breadth of America. And then the third book is the pledge to the flag. And so mm -hmm. this is probably the most narrative of the books, because I tell the story of how Francis Bellamy came up with the idea to say the Pledge of Allegiance. Mm -hmm. And um, you learn about how. Um, it was the 400th year of Columbus. Mm -hmm. And so he, Bellamy wrote this pledge because he knew that there were a lot of new Americans coming, you know, to, to America from Italy, um, Russian. Right. Just, right. You know, yeah. he, he wanted something to help bring the longstanding Americans together with the new Americans. And yeah. so he decided a day in October of 1892 and schools across the country said the pledge at the same time of day. It, they all were supposed to start, I think, at 9.15, and they invited veterans, and it was this big deal. It was all throughout the newspapers, and so that's how we got our pledge. It was a very orchestrated event. Like, you were talking about 80,000 people. Yes, you know, that's, yes. That's everybody was doing this yes. all at for the first yes. time. And then, so that's the number three book, and the number four is my, um, my country tis of thee. Oh, so it's the lyrics in each set of verses, there's a different theme. Mm -hmm. um, the first verse is, is landscapes and then you have uh, with an eagle and then you have inventions, you know, trains and planes and, and things like that set against the backdrop. But there's also narrative in between the verses that tells you the story of how right. my country tis of thee came to be. It yeah. was first sung by children in 1831 on July 4th. And then it caught on as a popular song. And then what really struck me was that after the Civil War in 1865, 2,000 children sang My Country Tis of Thee at the state capitol in Tennessee. And 3,000 gathered in uh, at Cooper Union in New York. Mm -hmm. And so it was a way to heal the country. Mm -hmm. My Country Tis of Thee was a healing song. And then just to discover that Marian Anderson sang my, my country tis of thee mm -hmm. at the, the memorial. And then of course, Martin Luther King quotes, let freedom ring. Yes. My country tis of thee. Yes. And so you can see how it's been a song that Americans have turned to over the years. Yes. Um, the other book that's a number four is a bigger book. Okay. And it's called what's true about the red, white, and blue. Mm -hmm. And I show you, that Congress actually gave virtues to the colors red, white, and blue in 1782. Yes. When they did the great seal with the eagle, they defined red, white, and blue. And I explain, you know, I define it. Valor is the color red. Right. And then you, you get introduced to some American heroes who lived out valor. Mm -hmm. uh, we go through all the virtues. And so that's, you know, for ages, you know, fourth, fifth, fourth and fifth grade. That's yeah. an old you know more there's more reading involved sure sure 
Um, but it, all of them have these beautiful pictures with a variety of children and then, you know, landscapes and um, different locations and to really just show off that sweet land of liberty. Yeah, you know? oh, absolutely. And how, how um, geographically diverse America is. Mm -hmm. I live in Virginia where there's a lot of trees, <laughs> but I grew up in Texas where there was, you know, a lot of uh, flat landscape, you know, mm -hmm. with, with fewer trees. And so um, anyway, and I think, I think we are patriotism and our love of country it, it it's also about love of our neighbors and our communities yes. and the pride that we have in yes um, oh, and that and then that we come together under the name american yes. and george washington said to americans as he was saying goodbye as president he said the name american belongs to you in right. your national capacity and it must exalt the just pride of patriotism more than any other appellation, which he meant any other name. Yeah, yeah. So we were to unite under under being Americans. And that's what the, these books show you, that we can unite, you know, um, as Americans uh, under these ideas. Um, and it's aspirational and inspirational. It's not perfection, but it's to, you know, people have gone before us, like Francis right. Bell, yes. given the pledge. And then yes. going back to the pledge, um, I show in that book how uh, Dwight Eisenhower came along and said, we need to add under God. To the yes. Pledge. Yes. She I love that. Are different from the Soviet Union. Mm -hmm. And um, and that was really very purposeful. And it was mm -hmm. to show that we, we allow for freedom of religion in mm -hmm. America. Yeah. And that's why we have under God. And mm -hmm. it's, it's a, it shows you that the story continued for the pledge, mm -hmm. you know, and, um, and so I think these are just great, just foundational books. It's the type of book that you want to share with your children yes. and then the children, right? Yeah. It's, it, it is, it's a, it's a keepsake kind of book in that, mm -hmm. in that respect. You know, as I was sitting here listening to you describe these books and having read through some of the um, art copies that you've provided for me, you know, I think of a couple different places they would be so perfect for. And some of the things that you highlight that need to be implemented today as we are in this 2024 election season. Mm -hmm. And I sat there and thought these books would be great in our military USO offices, in mm -hmm. our service organizations, in um, working with the military kids because these are great for them. And this is the kind of world that they're in all the time. And mm -hmm. then also your museums your um, military-based museums as well. And another thought is, oh, I don't know, maybe we put them back in the public school systems and actually back at the university level and re-educate these kids mm -hmm. who may have not even got this. Who, yeah. you know, I mean, you have, you know, the CRT and the DEI are going to die, ladies and gentlemen, but this is what is bringing life to our nation it's given life to our nation and it's going to give back the life to our nation, but we need to stop erasing it and, mm -hmm. you know, re-educating and changing the hearts and minds of our, like you said, our neighbors sitting on the front porch, reading it to our kids, actually sitting down at the kitchen table. This show is based on common sense, kitchen table discussions. And you and I both know that most of those decisions happen at the kitchen table or in the car as we're feeding and eating and going. And, you know, I just sit there and say, this is an opportunity for us to be that testimony of God, country, and family through the power of your books. Even for this young generation, same thing for the older generation. It's a great reminder. And one other thought I had, you inspired me. And that is, let's get our precious veterans back into the public schools, leading the Pledge of Allegiance, maybe saying a prayer, putting prayer back in those public schools, and really, you know, impacting, it's lifting our veterans up, and it's inspiring a new generation for this country. Yeah, that's a great idea. All through yeah. your powerful book, sister. <laughs> <laughs> I'm working on, you know, even this week, I'm working on with some, you know, um, museums and yeah, I'm trying to, I have, you know, it is just like a, it's a one step at a time process. Right. Mm -hmm. and so, um, you know, I'd love to 
get a list even of, of military places that I should, should connect with because I'd love to do that. And I really would love to see these books just take hold um, in the country. And, um, you know, um, we just, it's, it's so important. And it is disheartening when you realize there weren't any books like this. Right. This category right. of children's books, right? Yes. And so, um, and so this current generation has missed out on, you know, that opportunity. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's also given me a chance. I, um, I, I kind of honed in on just the realization, like last year, there was a, a school in California that wanted to change their mascot away from the Minuteman because they didn't think the Minuteman could relate to, you know, students of different ethnicities, right? And then I found myself sort of screaming at the TV because I know that there were Black Minutemen and one of them was named Peter Salem. Mm -hmm. And and so to be able to picture that too, just to include that imagery to show how um, Peter Salem and his, the guy that freed him from slavery fought side by side at the Battle of Concord. Mm-hmm. And then Salem served, I think, four to six years in the Continental Army. Mm-hmm. Um, he was at, he crossed the Delaware River, you know, with Washington. And so just to show an accurate version too of, of history and that, that um, you know, people to, to, all, to not only reflect today's ethnicity and yes, as, yes, but just, oh, hey, we actually were, pretty diverse from the beginning yes. and that these men were putting their lives on the, um, and they were fighting together. Absolutely. Um, and, and that we, that was the genesis mm-hmm. of the, of, of our country and how, you know, we've become a more perfect union over the years by refining, mm-hmm. um, and, and to, and to show that, you know, through the, through beautiful images yeah. and to the children don't tend to see color like we no, do. They no, it they just don't. really, Oh, and so um, I think that they'll just be able to relate to the kids in these pictures mm-hmm. and to see themselves um, yeah. beautiful pictures. Well, on the final note, as we wrap this powerful segment, I want to send out a note to our audience because this show airs, obviously, podcasts, live streaming across the nation, but also in our nation's capital. So we have a lot of military bases in Virginia. D.C., Maryland, Pennsylvania, and then obviously North Carolina, South Carolina. So many people who are tuning in and just that cluster, there's a ton of military bases. So is there a way people could reach out to you if they say, hey, I heard your episode. We want to help you with a military base. How can we connect you? What's the best way for them to connect with you? Uh, well, I'm, I'm, a, I'm at Jane Hampton Cook in social media. Okay. Um, but uh, also info at janecook.com okay. is contact email through okay. my website. Um, and that, that's a way to connect with, okay. with me through that process. And so, yeah, you know, we just, we've got two years before we turn 250 years old as a nation. Mm-hmm. And that's the name of the series, Revolutionary Readers for America's 250th birthday. And that um, we've got some time here to yes. get this out and, um, help people feel feel good about their country because they have every reason to do so. Absolutely. To inspire and enlighten and lift up and to come as Americans. 